Hello viewers, welcome back to your favorite YouTube channel BBS. Today's video will discuss Edith Thompson, a woman who was wrongfully executed for her lover's crime. Edith Thompson was executed by hanging with her lover Frederick Bywaters on January 9, 1923, for having committed the murder of her husband Percy Thompson. After spending several days in a London prison and being injected with several doses of a powerful sedative, the London authorities announced the sentences of Mrs. Thompson and her lover. Although there was no strong evidence that she had helped Frederick Bywaters commit the murder, she was still sentenced to death. Nearly unconscious from the heavy doses of sedative, she was quickly brought to where her sentence was to be carried out. She died within minutes of being hanged. Her lover was executed the same day in a prison that was less than one kilometer from the place where Edith had received her sentence. On the day of the execution of these two people, a huge crowd stood in front of the place in order to be aware of the latest news concerning this case. When Edith was executed, she was only 29 years old, and her lover was only 20 years old. The murder of Edith Thompson's husband had taken place only three months before their execution. Percy Thompson was killed by multiple stab wounds by Frederick Bywaters. Mr. Thompson was killed after returning from a trip to the theater. He was stabbed while he was with Edith Thompson. Edith's lover kept saying that he had committed the murder alone and that Edith was unaware of the crime he had committed. However, despite his claims, the police ignored this and decided to name Edith Thompson also as the culprit of the murder, or rather an accomplice to the murder. A criminal case expert said the young woman's only crimes were being an attractive person, being unfaithful to her husband, and not obeying certain ethical codes of the society of her time. In other words, she has not committed any crime that could lead to the capital punishment, which is the death sentence. Many public figures of the time, such as novelists and men of letters, criticized the decision of the authorities regarding the murder of Percy Thompson and claimed that the death of the young woman Edith was completely unjust. According to a famous British writer, Edith Thompson was sentenced to hang by the London authorities solely because of the false claims of some members of the public, as there was no evidence to show that she was an accomplice to murder. The investigators of the time took only the opinion of the public into account and did not seek to clearly analyze this murder case in order to punish only the culprit. Edith Thompson was born Edith Graydon and grew up in a working-class family. Unlike other young girls of her age, she did not accept the fact of being poor and wanted to stand out from others. Specifically, she wanted to be an extraordinary woman who was completely different from the other women around her. She was born in 1893 in Manor Park in the city of London and was the eldest of a family of five children. During her childhood and adolescence, she helped her mother take care of her brothers and sisters. Being a very intelligent and ambitious woman, she quickly finished her schooling and headed for the job market. She joined a company in town called Carlton and Pryor and stayed there for a few years. Thanks to her hard work and her intelligence, she was able to go from a simple employee to one of the main buyers of the company. Edith was an ordinary working-class woman, but she did her best to stand out and be popular. She married Percy Thompson in 1916, when he was a shipping clerk. After their marriage, they bought a house in Ilford, which was not very far from the village where they both lived when they were children. It turned out that, thanks to her work in a millinery business, Edith Thompson earned more money than her father and her husband. She therefore contributed to the purchase of their house, although it was purchased under the name of Percy Thompson. Many people thought that since Edith was a newlywed, she would concentrate on housework and enjoy a peaceful life in her new home with her husband. However, that is not what she did. Being a person who loved to dance and party, she often frequented the dance halls of London and the lively parties of the hotels. Also, she spent her evenings with her friends in various places, restaurants, cinemas, theaters, etc., and was never at home. She was a dynamic and modern person who liked to enjoy the hobbies of rich people, which did not correspond to her social status. Edith was an ambitious woman who wanted to experiment with things that women of her social status would never do. She didn't want to follow the principles of society and went against its moral codes. Thus, she had a lover who was much younger than her, which was totally intolerable for the society of her time. Frederick Bywaters, Edith Thompson's lover, had known her family for several years as he was a classmate of one of Miss Thompson's brothers. Mr. Bywaters had joined the Merchant Navy at a very young age and had been able to go on vacation with Percy, Edith Thompson, and her younger sister. It was from this moment that Edith began to take an interest in Frederick Bywaters, who was still only a teenager. 
he officially becomes her lover when he moves into their house for a few weeks. He left the Thompson home after arguing with Percy Thompson. Some people had claimed that Percy was sometimes violent towards his wife when they argued. Mr. Bywaters, who was often not in London, sent letters to Edith so that they could keep in touch. After reading them, the young woman destroyed them so that there was no proof of their relationship. The letters were at first simple letters that described their daily lives, but then Edith began to write daring letters by approaching subjects like suicide. In wanting to be an extraordinary person, she often imagined living in a fantasy world and confused reality with her speculations. She sometimes thought she was a character in a novel and imagined an unreal life where she sometimes tried to kill her husband Percy. In these letters, she told her lover about the world she imagined and the sinister plans concerning Percy that were going through her head. On the third day of October 1922, Edith and her husband, Percy Thompson, went to see a comedy at the Criterion Theatre. They had come a long way to get to the theatre, and to get home to Ilford, they had to take the tube and the train again. On the way to their mainland, more precisely on the Belgrave Road, Percy was attacked by a man and received several stab wounds. He died on the spot when he was only 32 years old. The investigation into the murder then began. The victim's brother told police that the prime suspect in this murder was Freddy. The London authorities therefore searched his house and his ship and discovered Edith Thompson's letters. From then on, they said Miss Thompson was also a suspect in the murder. Frederick Bywaters did not deny the murder and justified his act as self-defense. He told investigators that Percy Thompson hit him when he was older than him. Edith Thompson was also charged with murder because the letter she had written could suggest that she wanted to get rid of her husband. However, young Freddy claimed she had nothing to do with his crime and that he acted alone. The contents of the letters had been broadcast by the press, and Edith and Freddy were detained pending trial. On December 6, 1922, their trial took place, and thousands of spectators were present to watch the trial unfold. It lasted for nine days, and during all these days, the crowd in front of the London court was still as abundant. Several artists and novelists were present in the courtroom to describe the trial according to their art. The letters found by the authorities during the investigation were read during the trial in front of thousands of people, which gave the public a negative opinion of Edith. People saw her as an arrogant woman who had everything she needed to have a peaceful life but preferred to waste it by having a lover and killing her husband. The public even began to think that she was the only culprit and that she had ruined the life of a young boy. The judge was also on the side of the public and had a dislike for Edith Thompson. The evidence against her was not sufficient, and several witnesses claimed that she was surprised by the murder of her husband, but despite this, she was found guilty. Edith had even testified at the bar, but the prosecution had managed to tamper with the evidence in order to incriminate her, and her lawyer could do nothing for her during the trial. After several hours of deliberation, the judge found Edith and Freddie guilty of Percy's murder and sentenced them to death. Despite Frederick Bywaters's insistence that she had done nothing wrong and was innocent, the judge ignored his words. After the sentence was announced, a petition was started to spare Freddie the death penalty, and it received several signatures. However, no one voted for Edith's innocence, as she was not well liked by other women. Some women even thanked the Minister of the Interior for applying the death penalty for Edith's crime. Edith wrote several letters in prison and described her thoughts while locked up. What was shocking is that Edith was not pardoned and that the Minister of the Interior absolutely wanted her to be executed. Several women before her had been sentenced to death, but later pardoned, but this was not the case for Edith Thompson. In September 1923, an auction took place in the house of Edith and Percy Thompson because many people wanted to obtain at least one object that had belonged to this couple. In Madame Tussauds, the wax works of Edith and Percy were exhibited and were a great source of attraction at the time. Edith Thompson's body now rests alongside that of her parents in a cemetery at Manor Park. Fortunately, the death penalty has been abolished for 50 years in the United Kingdom, but that does not mean that there are no more cases similar to Edith's. Many people are judged because of the erroneous prejudices of other people when they are innocent. It is for this reason that it is always necessary to use morality and intelligence before judging a person and declaring him guilty of a crime. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more reviews and discussions. Thank you for watching.